Welcome back folks to another episode of Firewood Doctor. Today I just want to talk about what I like about my 27 ton log splitter. One, it runs. Two, it runs. Three, it runs. And four, I don't have to split it by hand. Did I mention it runs? <laughs> Actually, more it's more about not having to split it by hand because my back would uh, be dead if I just uh, split by hand what I just got done doing uh, earlier today in the previous video. I got close to two cords split. This is a good four and a half face cords at least. Probably five. And so I was splitting them a little bigger at times than it did the oak. And the oak I might do a face cord an hour in the dryer stuff and stuff where it's stacked up like it was in that uh, long splitting video. I can do half a quarter an hour with this little thing Takes a little more t uh, prep work when you're Cutting the wood and chucking it, but it's gonna save you a lot of time and you're gonna up production uh, Quite a bit for a slow splitter, but that's the most you're gonna do is if you're doing a campfire wood Like I do the most you're gonna get out of it is half a quarter an hour and one time I did a video back in the fall, I did about two face cords and two, two and a half face cords in uh, just over an hour. But that's because it's all on a trailer and I could just grab it. It was all at above knee level. I didn't have to bend down and pick anything up. And I could just go. Uh, nice and dry. I could split bigger. Bigger than some of these pieces here. But uh, yeah, it's got all the power... I need in a splitter except the wedge is not tall enough so you see some of my videos I could get you know a chunk of wood this big and especially if it has a knot it is gonna split all the way through even if I hit the knot first put the knot on the bottom to make sure that split all the way through it doesn't always split the rest of the log all the way through and that's the main main gripe about this is the wedge could be taller but the reason that is that it's short is because the leverage at this point, as you can see, it's mounted below the halfway point of the wedge. If you made it any higher, as the force is applied to the wedge, it's going to put even more stress on this bolt, and it's just not just as made for it. Now, if the ram was mounted, what they call the half beam style, where this front of the cylinder is bolted down and it, this back end is just hanging off. The rest of the cylinder is just hanging off. Uh, then, uh, if you mount it, had that style and had the wedge mounted to the cylinder like in the middle of it, you can maybe go it a couple inches taller, but... And the other gripe is that um, it, it's nature of the beast where the oil tank is on here and the venting, you gotta have it level. Because the vent is on this side. If you have it tilted just a little bit downhill, well, the fluid will, or I should say, uh, let's see. Yeah, too much downhill, all the fluid will run here, and all the pressure will be here, and it'll start sucking air, and it'll aerate the fluid, which is not good. And then as the pressure builds up in that air pocket, it'll just push out the hydraulic fluid out the vent. So some people solve that by uh, putting a, a pipe extension for the filler. I say operate the splitter in a level side to side position, then you won't have to deal with uh, screwing around with that. Put a board under the tire if you have to for Pete's sake. Uh, fuel, uh, it doesn't do too bad. It'll do, if you're doing furnace size wood, it'll easily do a cord per tank. If you're doing campfire wood, it's going to burn a little more fuel because it's going to take a little more time. But if you uh, split uh, dry stuff, all that straight green stuff like this cherry, you might get over a cord per tank. Uh, even if you're splitting small, you might push that cord per tank. And it doesn't really grunt all that much. The only time it grunted at all is in uh, when it has some really big monster knots, like at the end of the 
my uh, last split video, it, it grunted. But it, it powered right through like it's nothing off. If it was ash that size, I would have had a heck of a... This splitter would have darn near stalled out. And so, yeah, anything I can lift up onto the splitter, it is split. Even 16, 18-inch oak I put on here, I've split it on the first pass clean through. It doesn't always show in my videos because, you know, I do a lot of hyperlapse to short things up, but... It'll split anything you can lift on there. Now, I don't like going vertical because it's just a, the hassle. I gotta flip the thing back and forth, and I'd rather just uh, take the saw, noodle it in half, and then put it on the splitter. If it's that big, you usually like quarter the thing up with the saw and then put it on there. Uh, the six and a half horse Briggs has a little bit of a finicky thing on there. It does not like to be idled down fast. I've had the engine stall out when I idled it down fast. It just died for for no reason. And then it was a, it was like the timing was off where the compression tripled. I could barely pull the thing over. I don't know what the heck happened. You just let it sit for a while and it pulls over fine. So the best way to handle the the issues like that is to idle it down slowly, take you know like five seconds or so to throttle it down from full throttle down to idle and just let it idle for a minute then shut it off and then it's fine if it doesn't backfire at all it doesn't uh, want to start the easiest even if it's idled down you idle it down uh, don't let it sit for a minute or so uh, then it can be really hard to start because it you know you gotta just let it idle down smoothly Throttle it down, take five seconds to do that from full to idle, and then just let it sit for a minute and just let it machine cool off, and then it works fine. It restarts fine. Uh, the other issue I had was uh, due to assembly error, two of the bolts came out that holds the axle where my foot is resting on right now. They fell out. They're somewhere out here. Somewhere out here. So there, of course, were metric bolts, so I hit the only bolts around here are SAE, so I got, instead of 10 millimeter bolts, I got two and a half inch uh, shoulder bolts. Two or two and a half, two and a half inch shoulder bolts with a uh, lock, nylon lock nuts. Put them on, I tightened it down, and it's fine. The other side is fine, it's tightened up the way it should. No idea why those other... What happened to those other ones? I don't think they broke. Uh, the other, another issue I don't like is that these clean out holes are not big enough. You always see me putzing around here, cleaning out this debris after a few splits sometimes. There's sometimes every piece, there's so much little debris that jams up in here, it just doesn't fall through. As long as you don't let it pack in, it's easy to clean out. You just take a couple seconds, pluck it out, keep on going. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, this splitter valve here seems to be a little floppy, but it hasn't gotten really any worse. I've, I've gotten close to uh, 60 cords through this splitter now. So I would, I would say it's a safe bet. I know what the splitter can do. And I know I'm talking about when it comes to this splitter's performance. So in a year and a half done about 60 cords, uh, it, it's not had zero issues other than when I first discovered that the uh, engine issue where it didn't idle it down or it backfired if you idled it down too fast or, or not let it idle long enough and shut it off and it backfired and it had compression issues like the timing was off. Other than that, zero issues. Oh, and uh, one maintenance item that you want to keep in mind, I will try to, uh, a resistor type plug. I thought, okay, they're all resistor types. No, this engine does not like resistor type spark plugs. So if it has like a, a BR8ES or whatever, I'm just picking a number, I forget what this is. You don't get the one with the R, that means resistor. You get the B8ES or whatever it is. Get that plug because the I've had two brand new 
resistor plugs. Same one as this, resistor, and then the one it came with. Now, because it wasn't starting for some reason. It turns out I flooded it. But uh, resistor plugs do not fire in this engine. For some, for some reason, the, the ignition on here does not like resistor type plugs. So remember that when you're uh, stocking up on spares, just get the standard plug. Uh, paint is held up. I've almost never had this thing covered. Uh, the markings on the cylinder have uh, come off because of uh, weathering. It's faded. The sticker is still on here. Actually, the 27 ton on this side. It's all still on here, but it's uh, faded off, faded away and or worn off over time. Uh, yeah, got upwards of a. Uh, 150 and 180 hours on this thing Not a lick of trouble other than operator error That's it The only things are operator error and the other issue was assembly error Which wasn't my fault because I picked it up. Uh, I bought it assembled so. uh, As far as uh, this the right splitter for me when I have the time and sales aren't busy this is a very good splitter uh, it'll do it'll split anything you want it to do it'll work all day long not hiccup you might be wondering why my gloves are here for one I can only touch the cylinder because of the gloves two uh, it rained a bit last night and the wood was wet and it works excellent for drying your gloves it also keeps them you know nice and warm so it kind of feels good when you get back to work and uh, after a break, put on nice, warm, dry gloves. If the backside doesn't dry off and on one break, you just flip it over. You know, oh, is that, that's nice and warm. That feels good. It's like a hot pad. Yeah. And uh, it, it moves easy enough because, you know, it's in that 450, 500 pound class. But back to uh, the right splitter for me. Yeah, like I said, when the sales are slow and the weather is cool like it is now, it's like in, you know, mid-60 for a high today, you know, for the next week. It won't hit 70s for, oh, at least another week. I can get a lot of work done. Get the same amount of work done in, like, half the time. If it was 80 degrees, it would have taken me all day to split to what I did just, uh, you know, uh, this morning in uh, four hours ish of work it would have taken me literally all day if it was 80 degrees uh, the new splitter that I'm getting commercial grade it has a push through wedge and this is what I don't like about I, I nip some people wonder why I never used a four-way wedge it's because it's a pain to use I tried it when I first got it and the perfect wood it was fine but it's just the hassle of trying to separate the pieces from underneath and if it gets stuck and you know, let it drag all the way back as you couldn't really pull it off but the splitter I'm upgrading to has a push through wedge the wedge is here and it just has a big old pusher plate so I could just uh, set the auto cycle they'll have two levers here to hit both when it gets to the end it just kicks off automatically retracts kicks off again but this one just has manual all the way back, uh, all the way forward, and it'll stop instantly when you let go. And it's in case you slip and fall, it doesn't crush your hand. And then automatic stop on the return. Uh, yeah, the four-way wedge on here on these style splitters sucks. Uh, I feel like I can get the work done just, just about as quick with the wedge the way it is uh, yeah, and some of the pieces are split the four-way just wouldn't work you know and I gotta be taking it on and off and I was like forget it I'll just run this thing leave it as, as it is uh, it'd be nice if it had a log lift but there are ways workarounds around that you could noodle the wood you could move it vertical which I don't care to do because you still got to wrestle those big pieces of wood into position 
then you don't split all the way through you got to wrestle it again so I don't know why people go goofy over uh oh you got a vertical splitter do that instead of you know noodling the wood I'm like it's still got to move a 200 pound block of wood you know so just noodle in half or bust it with wedges in a mall or something uh, nothing else on the splitter uh, other than just saying it's been stone reliable you know, and reliable as an anvil or holds up like a stone whatever uh, other uh, sayings and isms you can come up with and uh, yeah I, I still can't believe it's had no issues you know, I could, I could easily go another 140 cord with this thing easily. Another uh, three years on this splitter at the volume I'm doing. But I'm increasing volume, so I'm upgrading to another splitter for that reason. Because it's going to hold up. Because in another three years, the splitter would be shot, possibly. Uh, who knows? It could go three, 400 cord before it uh, wears out. But... Yeah, I'll, I'm upgrading now so I can get that nice log lift and other features, but for the everyday person that's just doing firewood, home heating wood for themselves, or maybe a, help out a neighbor once in a while, this class of splitter is all the machine you need. You don't need to go get a $10,000 splitter like, like I have on the way. This is all the splitter you need. Now that these are upwards of a, unless you can find a scratch and dent. You know, Fleet Farm, they're, 15, they're 1400 uh, Some places like Tractor Supply or other places, you know, they're sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars $1,700 for the same thing. So, yeah, uh, just find, as far as uh, buying one of these, find the cheapest one you can because they're basically all made in the same factory. Uh, HTL or HTL or something or HYL whatever uh, I can't remember YTL um, it might be it might be YTL that that makes all these splitters uh, just find the cheapest one you can if you go to buy a brand new one because yeah, they're all going to use the same components the same valves the only difference is be the engine you either get the base Kohler you're going to get the base model Briggs uh, Consumer grade Kohler and Briggs or the consumer grade Honda. The Honda might be the better one. I, actually, if I could get a choice of the engines, I'd get the Kohler. Now, if you get one of these as a Briggs Vanguard, that's an upgraded engine. That's your commercial engine, but you're usually going to get the standard Briggs, the standard Kohler, or the consumer grade Honda on these. So just get the cheapest one you can. Uh, it'll serve you plenty of years uh, if you're just doing home heating wood or campfire wood here and there you don't want to split by hand uh, but if you're going to be doing production and getting upwards of more than 20 quarter a year then upgrade I've already done well more than that already uh, I'm pushing uh, I'm a well over 20 quarter already this year split but if you got the time, it'll do the job, but and if you got the time, stick with one of these until you can upgrade. But everyday homeowner use, this is the way to go. I have no issues uh buying it again if I was just gonna do home heating wood or a little bit here and there for myself for campfires. I have i I'd have no issue buying one of these again whatsoever. I know I repeated myself a few times. But it, it, it's just the, those parts of it is what really uh, touches me the most is that, like I said, you know, this is all the split you need for doing just a few cords a year. No need to go bigger if you're going to do more than, you know, if you're going to do less than 20 cord, forget it. Just stick with these. They're cheap to fix, cheap to buy, cheap to replace. At least they used to be. This one was a thousand bucks a year and a half ago, and then... A few months later, it jumped to 1200 Now it's 1400 for the thing. So, yeah. Get one sooner than... If you're thinking about getting one of these, get one sooner than later. Or if you find someone like me that's upgrading, buy it from them. Uh, 
you're going to be paying nine, seven to nine hundred bucks for these uh, used. I see some people trying to sell them for a thousand. I think they're nuts. Even if they had any amount, even if it was like new, I wouldn't bother. I'd just go buy a brand new one for a thousand or try to find a scratch and den for like eleven hundred or something. You're going to spend fourteen hundred on a new one. You know, or a th or eleven hundred if you can find a scratch and dent. Or are you going to spend a thousand on a used one? Asking price, forget it. Yeah, this one I'm selling it for. I'd sell it for nine hundred bucks. I'd I'd take eight hundred if someone just drove up and offered eight hundred for it. I'd say here, take it, clear out the wood, hook it up for them, and uh, to their hitch and uh, send them on their way. So that is fun. The last of the all I got thoughts on this splitter. So, till next time, folks, take care and get out there, do something, but have fun doing it.